So basically, me and my fiance went to my mate's dad's slash uncle's pub slash restaurant and had a drink and something to eat. We left and it wasn't dark yet, so we went to these woods like five minutes away. We got there and my fiance froze. She looked too anxious and she went white. I was fine. I just said, let's go for a quick walk before it gets dark. So we got out and started walking down the path. The path was literally a straight line with crossroads every so often. I was completely fine, but she was clearly anxious or paranoid about something and kept looking around and saying she doesn't like it here. I started to freak out, like, why is she doing this? Carried on walking and she said, can we go back? I have a bad feeling. We need to go, like, now. I was so confused and made me a little anxious as she wouldn't tell me what was wrong. After like 10 seconds of walking, I looked to my right and I saw a silhouette of an adult standing on the side of the path. No clothes, no facial features, and nothing to resemble a human. I wasn't seeing things. I saw it and my heart sunk. You know that cold, heart-wrenching feeling you get? I went so pale and so cold. I couldn't stop shaking. I was fucked. Then we kept walking and I was so paranoid, I kept looking behind us. We were getting closer to the car and she was nearly in tears. I got to the car and it suddenly went pitch black outside. Like it was bright, then next thing you know, it's dark. We drove out and she said, I don't want to talk about it until I'm out of this area. So we drove out the area and then I said to her, did you see something? And she said, yeah, I'm still looked pale as fuck. Then I said, I'll tell you what I saw first so that you know I'm not bullshitting you. So I said what I saw and she saw the exact same thing, but she saw it twice and she described it exactly how it looked. It was kind of like slender man vibes. Honestly, it was the most fucked thing I've ever experienced in my life. But it gets worse. So then we got back to Crawley and parked up outside her house. I parked facing a wall so the back end of my car had space for people to walk behind it. We were talking about it and we kind of forgot about it. Then I randomly looked in my windscreen mirror and saw someone walk really slowly behind the car. So I said to her, oh, there's someone behind the but I couldn't finish my sentence as that person vanished. I was looking in my wing mirror to see the person walk past, but no one popped out the other side. I got out and looked and there was no one around us. My heart sunk so much into my chest. Never felt this petrified in my life. Then she saw someone walking next to the car. So I said, fuck this and pulled out and left. Then we drove out to the car park and as soon as we did, we saw this woman walk out of her house holding her chest and staring at the sky, screaming as loud as she could. This is the first time something's happened to me and I have so many questions. The first time I got nervous in my new house was when I turned six. I was helping my dad cook dinner and he had asked me to go get my sister as it was time to eat. I waddled down the hallway and went to open our bedroom door only to hear her talking and giggling. I opened the door slowly to see her brushing her doll's hair while talking. Thinking maybe she too had pretend friends, I asked her who she was talking to. She answered me smiling, the little girl from the closet. I took it as she meant the doll because that's where it was when put up. Regardless, I told her the food was done and we went on with our evening. This proceeded to occur for a while, a few years even. I just ignored it and my parents didn't believe me until they caught her doing it. Suddenly, I wasn't so weird. From talking to no one, my sister progressed to sleepwalking. Usually she would go to the bathroom and just stare at herself in the mirror. Eyes wide open, but no one home. My dad sleeps incredibly light and would wake up when she passed his door 
and tell her to go back to bed after a while. She never once would say a word. I mentioned the sleepwalking because by the age of 10, I was terrified of the house. Every night, I would cry when I stayed there. I told my dad, someone is walking the halls, or dad, someone is in the house, I swear. He would tell me it was my sister or just the creaking of an old house. Little did I know, once we moved out, he would come to me and tell me he heard it too. It scared him as well. It wasn't my sister. Time passed and I moved into my brother's old room. My dad built an extra room in the basement and he moved down there so we wouldn't have to be next to his annoying younger sisters, lol. So when I was moving into the room, I was cleaning out anything he left, sweeping and just general cleaning that was needed. Well, I did the closet last. I opened up this tiny closet and on the top shelf was a globe. I figured it was my brother's, so I went to ask him. Nope, not his. Asked my dad. Not his either. I went to my stepmom and asked her. She had found it when we moved in. She had forgotten about it. Not really caring at this point, I put it back. I didn't use the top shelf anyway. For a long time, only little things would happen, like being watched, giggling, footsteps following you, and general unease. Maybe an open cabinet on the offhand or a door slowly opening until I was 18. I moved in for the summer because my mom worked out of state at the time. I remember one night I heard a door open as I was nearly asleep. Figuring it was my dad doing his goodnight check, I stayed in my loopy state. I felt something brush my hair back and then walk away and the door closed. I brought it up at breakfast and said, I knew you still checked on us at night, dad. He looked up and back down at his paper and said, no, I don't, you're old enough. I laughed and told him I heard him. I'd felt him touch me. He stopped and slowly looked up at me. My smile slowly fell and I looked at my sister for support and she was sheet white. I looked back at my dad now, feeling nauseous, only for him to tell me, Lauren, I wasn't home last night. I left right after dinner for work. You know that. I felt ill. Someone or something had touched me, caressed me even. It hadn't felt evil, loving, almost longing even. My dad left and my sister took me aside to talk. She told me she had a dream last night where she found a guy in my room standing over me, looking at me longingly. She said she got the feeling I resembled his wife and it saddened him. So what did we do? We set up a camera. We videotaped for weeks. Until one night, you heard and saw my closet door slightly creep open. Until suddenly the screen went black and the rest of the video was blank static. I never felt quite right in that room, but that made me feel like I was an animal in a zoo for something or someone. After that, I'd take more notice of things like my dogs refusing to enter or stay in my room or they'd sleep on top of me and I'd wake to them snarling at night. My lights would flicker and my radio would suddenly cut out. Luckily, I moved to college shortly after and due to family issues, we moved while I was gone. My family owns a large piece of land in Missouri, near the highlands, but partially on the plains. It includes a lovely little chapel, a one-room schoolhouse, a stables, and the plantation home. My family has owned the land for years. I grew up spending school breaks there. It was always enjoyable, regardless of the hard work I had to put in. Every Halloween, my family would do a local hayride and barbecue. It was great fun and everyone loved it. We decorated the entire property. The schoolhouse had all the original desks and materials left in it, so we tried to utilize it the most and secondly the plantation home. It wasn't super structurally sound, so we kept everyone on the first floor. Only family was allowed on the upper floors. Us cousins used to love to set up and clean for the big night. The stables were a working area, so we left that to the adults. No one went inside the chapel because we wanted to make sure it stayed in its good condition. 
So we'd put up a fake little graveyard and that was it. The school was abandoned and the house was a walkthrough. When I was 16, I was helping set up the walkthrough. It was cheesy, but it was fun. I was cleaning the ornate mirrors on the first floor when I heard laughter above me. Figuring it was my cousins, I kept working. I'd hear the footsteps of them moving and their laughter for a while. When I got done, I called up that I was going to help outside and heard, all right, see you later, and more laughter. I walked out smiling because I found it cute they were so immersed in the home. Imagine my confusion when I walk into all four cousins at the main house. I asked them how they'd beat me back and they looked at me like I lost it finally. They told me they had been working on the chapel graveyard, nowhere near the walkthrough. I said it wasn't nice to try and trick me. We left it at that and continued on for the day. I only realized we weren't alone when I got a call from my youngest cousin asking why I was running around upstairs in the plantation home. I got deathly quiet. When she asked me again, I could only tell her I wasn't even on the property. I was in town. To this day, we haven't figured out who exactly lives upstairs. They don't cause harm, but they do enjoy their mischief. Any more we keep in constant contact when we are visiting, just to be sure. I was holding a fork in my hand. It was a small fork, like the type people use to eat fancy desserts. And my cat was watching this, so she saw. The next second, the fork is gone, straight from my hand. I know this doesn't sound paranormal, but I'm not making this up. And I want to know if anyone has experienced anything like this. I'm a little bit distressed. I only have two such forks and one is gone. But the problem is I used to have three and the exact same happened thing with this one. Now I'm down to one. This hasn't happened with any other type of fork. This was a few minutes ago and I searched obsessively and nothing. I feel I didn't react quickly enough because I was sort of in shock for about a minute. There was also this strange air of disaster in the area, some sort of sensation of impending doom that drained my energy and made everything appear slightly darker. It was no less sunny, but the sunlight took on a faded, hostile tone, as though it was cast but a diseased grey sun, the sort of rotting life source you would see in a world where everything was made of plant matter that had begun to decay and fold in on itself. It was really uncomfortable, like being sucked in by a vacuum, and I have a bit of a headache from the experience. I would compare it to the emotion usually accompanying deja vu. Last week, I moved into my dorm room and met my roommates. I'm a college freshman. I always thought they acted a bit strange or were more uncanny in the way they acted, but I always attributed it to some kind of anticipation due to stress and everything being new but it always felt like they were planned or acting out their actions. However, yesterday, my roommates and I had the exact same conversation twice. Once in the morning and once in the evening. Her hair was wet and she gave the impression dyeing it. You wouldn't dye wash your hair twice in one day. There were multiple moments where in the morning I had been embodying her and I had to make up a response that sounded like her. Of course, these responses didn't make sense, and I knew when she was about to say them. So I listened in horror as she spoke words that I made her speak, and I saw that they made no sense. This was incredibly weird. I asked her if she was scraped and that part deviated back to normal for a second. However, it always went back to the set path. Part of the conversation that I remembered I hadn't heard in the morning or didn't make sense to me, I heard or did make sense to me in the afternoon, i.e. I had been given context for it during the way. I thought I was dreaming multiple times, so I did the typical tests people suggest, like checking the time, but nothing happened and I didn't snap out of it. 
I've always had these kinds of thought slippage problems, like accidental telepathic communication, or other people saying what I'm thinking, but it had never been this long or sustained. I had a really strong sensation the entire time of dread that I remembered feeling before, but have never been able to pin down for so long. I remembered while she was saying something that I'd sent someone a Discord message, ooh, in response to her saying that this morning, and the message was there. The entire place feels really bizarre and I'm not sure what's going on. I was hearing some things that I could predict that were songs and ritual-like. And after that was happening for a while, it turned evil and the lights were saying trick, trick, trick over and over again at me. And I knew that I had been tricked into not believing these things, even though they'd happened before. There was also some other things mocking me, like these girls that were able to tell what I was thinking. I'm completely aware of how crazy this sounds. All of this stuff happened before and has been happening for a while, but for shorter periods of time. I didn't take anything, and I know that I was perfectly lucid and was able to question what was happening the entire time. Has anyone experienced something like this? It's really freaking me out, and I feel like it's the culmination of things that have been going on for a while, considering I've been a lot more lucid of the weird things that have been happening lately that may have precipitated retaliation. So I went ghost hunting last night and had an experience I will never forget. I'm 23 female and I go to college with my best friend, 20 also female. We joined a local club on campus. Upon meeting the other people in our club, we soon realized that we all shared an interest in folklore and the supernatural. So we decided that clubs should meet up for a ghost hunting night on campus for fun. We met around nine at night and visited a few hot spots known on campus. While we got a little bit of interaction, it was nothing major, mostly small EVPs and some captures on Snapchat. The group was having a blast, including my friend and I. By 11.30, our group had dwindled down to less than six of us, as most of the group had gone home to go to bed. It was at that point, we decided to visit the most active place on campus, which is a residential hall. The hall is haunted by rather famous ghost, who I will call Jay. Jay was a young baker who worked at his family's bakery that had been on campus. Jay unfortunately died when he fell and got locked in the oven and burned to death. The hall is built on top of where the bakery used to be. Jay is known around the hall for pulling pranks like hiding keys and turning on radios. Our group leader, who I'll call Kay, is an RA at the building and knows all of the spots that Jay frequents. She took us inside and led us to one of the hot spots, which is a computer lab. We all took seats in different rows at the lab. Where I sat, there was nobody around me and we were quite a few feet apart from each other. This is important. So we sit there and Kay has a spirit box app going on her phone. We start talking to Jay and tell him to move stuff around us to prove he was there. Every time we do the spirit box responds with no or not a good idea. I was getting bored and tired at this point, so I started egging Jay on more by telling him to knock stuff over or even mess with me. Finally, I tell Jay to open the closet, to which we get no response. Kay starts talking about how a lot of the activity relates to the closet. It was at that moment that the back of my chair is smacked hard enough that it lets out an audible smack. It was also hard enough that it sent vibrations through my body. I scream immediately and book it to the door, and so does everybody else. We race out of the room and down the hall, where we finally stop and catch our breath. I've never been so shaken in my entire life. There was no way that any of us could have smacked my chair because we were so far apart. I was also sitting completely still and when there was nothing behind me that could have fallen and hit my chair. It also felt a direct straight to my back. I've always believed in ghosts, but I've never had an experience until last night. My friend was recording the whole thing with an audio recorder and caught the moment it happened. Needless to say, I won't be returning to that residential hall anytime soon. I 
I was nine or ten years old at the time that this happened. My brother and I both had our own rooms, but we slept in my room at night because I had a bunk bed. One night, he was sleeping on the bottom bed and I slept on the top bunk. We kept the door to my room open where the light was sort of shining in through the hallway and from the living room where my mom was watching TV. I remember having a hard time getting to sleep and phased in and out of either trying to close my eyes to relax or just look around the room. I eventually looked at the front end of the bunk and I saw a face slowly start to rise up. Its eyes and mouth were both wide open, but I can't remember any other features of the face. I anxiously, nervously and frustratedly called my brother's name, thinking it was him just being weird again. But I didn't hear anything in response. Breathing hard and freaking out, I somehow gathered the courage to move. I hopped off the bunk and sprinted to the living room to tell my mom. We obviously found nothing when we got to my room to look, but the memory has remained with me since that night. I know that all of that may have sounded far-fetched and over-exaggerated. It might have been warped and changed in my mind over time. And I will say that I did let my morbid curiosities get the best of me a lot as a kid, as I watched a lot of ghost shows. So that might have made me see something that wasn't there when this happened. The thing that remained certain though, is that this was the first time I felt pure terror in my heart. I grew up in southern Pennsylvania, not far from Gettysburg. When I was eight years old, my parents decided to build a house on vacant property surrounded by fields, and it was beautiful. I lived with both of my parents and my two older brothers, who were 15 and 17 at the time. Though I grew up in the area, we only stayed in this house for four years. My first night there was not what I expected it to be. I was laying in my bed and had just closed my eyes. Then I heard a voice that sounded like a soft whisper about six inches from my face say, help, over and over, just repeating the same word until I fell asleep. I tried my best to forget about it because I thought there was no way the house could be haunted. It was brand new. About a month goes by and I'm sitting on my bed doing what I used to love doing most, which was read. I glanced up and looked at my doorway because I saw something out of the corner of my eye. At that moment, I had officially seen a full body apparition of what appeared to be a soldier from the 19th century, but he didn't see me. He was just walking by my room very slowly. I still remember every de detail of his appearance 20 years later. He was covered in blood and looked like he had been shot or stabbed. This lasted for about five seconds. Still being creeped out, my curiosity got the best of me and I walked out of my room and searched all over the house, but found nothing unusual. About a week or two goes by and I'm in my bed trying to fall asleep yet again, only to be disturbed. Before I even had the chance to close my eyes, by this voice that was very deep and masculine. I couldn't understand a word it was saying because it was speaking in a different language. It sounded annoyed and angry. It happened every night at the exact same time for two weeks before it suddenly stopped. After that, I had a night terror. I am absolutely terrified of spiders. I had woken up in the middle of the night. I could see what looked like a tarantula crawling on me in bed. I swear it was there. I definitely saw it. I was panicking. My dad came in the room to check on me, found out everything was okay. Before I could fall asleep, I heard what sounded like two men laughing right next to my bed. At this point, I was getting used to fucked up shit happening. One summer, I stayed up late every night so I could watch Hannah Montana at midnight. One night, when the clock struck midnight, I'd heard my back door downstairs open. Then I would hear a woman say my name as if she was calling for me. I'd hear the door shut, followed by footsteps then there would be silence. It happened every night for almost two months. It never failed. It didn't even bother me at that point. 
I knew it wasn't my mother because she worked 12-hour night shifts at the hospital almost every night. There were no other females around. But one night, it stopped altogether. I was up at midnight and nobody called my name. I went to sleep and everything felt peaceful. I woke up to the sound of someone knocking on my bedroom door. I looked at the clock on my cable box. It was 3 a.m. I assumed it was one of my brothers and told them to go away. But then the doorknob started turning, but it wouldn't open because the door was locked. I've always slept with my bedroom door open, always, and I definitely wasn't the one who locked it. The knocking and doorknob rattling went on for what felt like forever. Then it stopped. A few minutes later, I hear what sounds like scratching at the door. I think to myself, what the fuck? Is it my cat? But then the knocking, scratching, and turning of the handle started happening at the exact same time. No way in hell my cat could do all three at once, let alone the knocking and turning the doorknob. It happened for about 30 seconds, then it would stop. It happened at least five times. Sometimes the knocking would be so hard, it sounded like pounding and my whole door was shaking. Whatever was on the other side of that door really wanted to come in. It got so bad, it woke my dad up. He heard all of the commotion, and as soon as he opened his bedroom door, it all stopped instantly. He called out to me, but I was too afraid to say anything. He went back in his room and closed the door, but the same scenario repeated itself three more times. My dad made me sleep in his room. We never spoke about it, ever. Things seemed to be fine for a while. Then whatever was in my house struck again. My brother had got up to go to the bathroom. He turned the hallway light on, noticed my bedroom door was closed as it was across the hall from the bathroom. He comes out of the bathroom and the hallway light is off and my bedroom door was wide open. He looked inside my room and saw me still sleeping. Everyone else in the house was sleeping. He woke my dad and brother and told them what had happened and they searched the house for a possible intruder but found nothing. Months go by and we're all awoken by our smoke detector going off in the middle of the night. We all go downstairs in a panic just to find out that our stove is on, full blast, big ass flame on top of the stove, in the middle of the night. What the fuck? One day it was just my father and I. My mom was at work at usual, my oldest brother was at work and my other brother was at a baseball practice. I'm downstairs, but I hear what sounded like somebody running upstairs. Forgetting that both of my brothers aren't home, I go up the stairs and see someone run into my brother's room and slam the door. It was loud. I thought for sure it was my brother, and I wanted to go in there and see what he was up to and why he would be running around like that. I opened the door. And nobody was there. I watched the door close right in front of me. I felt sick to my stomach just standing there, realizing the only other person that was home with me was my father, who was in the shower. I continued to see weird shit all of the time. One day, in the middle of the day, I saw my German shepherd run upstairs, full blast, as if she was chasing someone, but I didn't see what she was chasing. Whatever it was went under the bed, and she was viciously growling at it. I thought it was my cat until I saw him sitting on top of the bed, who appeared to be sleeping until we burst it in. One night, my cousin was spending the night. We were walking through the living room when she saw the reflection of another person on the glass of our big bookcase. Another time, we were in my backyard and she told me she saw somebody looking at us through the window on a few occasions, and it definitely wasn't anybody we knew. My brothers almost never had friends over, so that was not a possibility. I remember one day I was walking down the basement stairs. When I got to the bottom of the stairs, I saw what looked like another apparition. Except the apparition looked exactly like my oldest brother, but it also didn't look human. It was almost white and blue and his eyes were pure black. When he saw me, his eyes got really big and he looked terrified and ran away and went into the crawl space. 
I ran my ass upstairs to find out my brother wasn't even home. I never went back down there after that. A few months later, I was with the same brother and we were in the living room watching George Lopez late at night. I'm into the show, but he muted the TV. He looked at me and said, did you hear that? I told him, no, I didn't hear anything. We sat still for a minute and then I heard it. Together, we both heard footsteps coming up the basement stairs. My brother grabbed a baseball bat and we went to the basement to investigate, but to no avail. The rest of our family was sleeping upstairs. The next night, my mom was up late at night sitting at the dining room table, doing whatever it was she was doing. Around 3 a.m., the shelf in the dining room wall flew off the wall and put a hole in the wall that was adjacent to it. We looked at the nails in the wall that held up the shelf and they were still perfectly straight. We moved out of the house when I was 12. I still experience paranormal things, but not anything that comes close to what we dealt with in that house. I believe there are a lot of spirits there and I'd love to know about what happened there previously because so much activity. We were a regular church going family, so I'm sure if there were anything demonic there, it just pisses it off even more. What do you think it could have been? The house I grew up in in southeast Missouri was definitely haunted. Anyone who spent significant time in our house, and by that I mean at least a few hours, would tell you there was something going on there. My cousins, aunts and uncles, People didn't generally like to come visit us much because it would definitely be unnerving. Growing up, we would always hear weird things, feel like we were being watched, and see things out of the corner of our eyes. One of my favorite creepy occurrences was when you'd walk into the kitchen after just being in there, and several drawers and or cabinet doors would be open when you know for sure they were closed before. My sister and I would be laying in bed at night and see things peering out at us from our closets or see someone pass by our door and scream for our parents and they would always explain it away as us dreaming or imagining things. Things like the cabinet doors or weird sounds would be blamed on the house settling. Mind you, this house was built in the early 70s. It was fairly new when my parents bought it. There had only been one other person who lived there before we moved in. But she left because she moved away, not because she died or anything like that. After my parents' divorce, it felt like the activity spiked. We would often hear a woman's voice down the hallway, which was odd because my mom had moved out of the house. One night, when I was about 14 or so, I was doing dishes at the kitchen sink. The way our kitchen was laid out, if you were standing at the sink, your right side would be right up against the counter. There was no room for anyone to get between you and the counter, which made it inconvenient when you needed to grab a plate from one of the cabinets above or silverware from the drawer. Anyway, I was standing at the sink one night washing dishes in the sink, and a woman's voice spoke my name in my right ear. My dad was at work, and my sister was in her bedroom playing with her Barbies. I literally felt breath on my ear. It was that close to my face. I looked to my right and of course there was no one there. I immediately dropped the plate I was holding back into the water and screamed. I ran out of the kitchen and didn't go back in for a couple of hours. The ornery older sister in me would send my little sister into the kitchen for snacks, lol. We would sometimes get to see this female spirit. The way our house was laid out, there was a long hallway from the living room that went down about 40 feet and all the bedrooms were off the hallway. The smallest bedroom in the house was all the way at the end of the hall, and that was the room my sister and I were terrified of as kids, because we would see things peering out of the closet in the dark. If you were sitting in my dad's recliner in the living room, the hallway was on your left, and sometimes we would catch glimpses of a woman in a long white dress, crossing the hallway between the two back bedrooms of the house. All those years, my dad swore he never experienced anything weird or creepy in the house. After my sister and I grew up and moved out on our own, my dad called me one day to ask me where I was hiding. He was laughing and he said, come on, 
I know you're hiding in the house. I just heard you. I was shocked. I was three hours away, sitting on the couch in my living room in Kentucky. When I told him this, he was so confused. He said, but I know you heard come call my name from the bedroom. I said, no, dad, that was probably the ghost. He laughed it off, but months later we had come for the holidays and my dad admitted that he too was beginning to notice weird occurrences in the house. He could no longer explain it away as someone else being in the house to make the sounds or speak. He would notice things being moved around or see things out of the corner of his eye. It took him 30 years to admit that there was something up with our house. To keep from creeping himself out, I think, Dad nicknamed the female ghost in the house Doris. He would make jokes all the time about Doris doing things, like moving his stuff around on his desk or leaving the cabinet doors in the kitchen open. To this day, we call the back bedroom Doris room, lol. This went on for three years, from ages 10 to 13. The first night I was about to go to sleep when I heard a shuffling sound, which resembled shuffling your feet across carpet very distinctively four times. A pause, and then the sound four times repeatedly over and over again. It sounded like it wasn't in my room, but in the living room, which was through the hallway. After getting no sleep due to fear to even move in my bed every single night, I began to notice patterns and rules. It would only happen once everyone in the house was asleep and my dad, who'd stay up really late in the living room, was gone in the garage smoking or at work and out of the living room. If I slept with my baby brother in the same room, it wouldn't happen. If I slept with my mom or my younger brother in the room, it would start up immediately after they fell asleep. The only way I got any sleep was if I put on a taped narration of the Bible and or if I slept with my baby brother in the same room or next to me, which I would do regularly at this point. Three years of this go by, the first year sounding like it was only in the living room, until it escalated to where it sounded like it was shuffling just outside my bedroom door or in the hallway. Four carpet shuffles, pause, repeats, over and over again. At this point, I was regularly sleeping not in my room, by myself, but in my brother's room that they shared on the floor or sharing a bed with my baby brother. A few times I would just be laying there while everyone else was asleep, just listening to this thing. It became normal to a certain extent, and I felt as comfortable with it as I could have been, as long as I had someone else sleeping with me. One night, I was kept up by the sound to the point that I woke up my younger brother and asked him if he heard it. He could. He said he didn't know what I was talking about, got annoyed, and told me to shut up and let him sleep. I tried talking to my mom and expressing my concern and fear, but she never believed me. Never. She didn't want to hear it. The last night I heard it was the worst. My brothers were gone at, at grandma's and it was just me and mom in the house. I fell asleep to the sound, woke up at around 2 a.m. and got a real bad gut feeling. At this point, it had been happening for roughly three years and only now I wasn't just feeling fear, but it was a raw gut feeling that's hard to explain. I got the courage to sprint through the dark house into my parents' room to my mom. I just didn't want to be alone. I woke up my mom crying and begging her to sleep with me, check under all the beds and in the closets for anything. She was annoyed, but obliged and looked through the entire house like I requested. There was nothing. I somehow convinced her to sleep on the floor of my brother's bedroom while I slept in my brother's bed. She was tired of my bullshit because she could never hear it. We finally turned out all the lights and within maybe 10 minutes, my mom was snoring. I began to hear the shuffling sound as my mom fell asleep. It moved from the living room to the hallway to outside the door and then it got even louder. This was the first time it sounded like it was not outside my door, but now in the room with me. I could feel my heart beating so fast. I could not only hear the same shuffling sound, but I also felt that gut feeling roll from nothing, but that, 
to straight up nausea and panic. I couldn't bring myself to move my whole body. My vision was strained in the darkness and my ears were ringing. The shuffling moved and changed. With every corner the sound reached, there were no more pauses between the four shuffles. It sounded urgent. My eyes darted, following where the sound went, from staring intensely at the door where it always had been. Then it rushed to the corner furthest away from the bed. Four shuffles and no pause. To the next corner. Four shuffles and no pause. And then over me on the ceiling. Four of the loudest, most terrifying shuffles right over me above my head. I let out a scream and then nothing. Nothing ever again. I was left with shock, a ringing in my ears, and a sort of pressure on my body as the result of just pure fear. It's hard to explain. My scream woke me up, who rushed to turn on the light just to see me sitting straight up, wide-eyed, and just sobbing my eyes out. She didn't believe me even after all that, and chalked it up to sleep paralysis or a bad dream. She comforted me though and got me to calm down. My mom called my dad the morning after and told him about it. Later, my dad would come back from work and sat down with me to talk to me. He asked me all these questions about it and I explained to him exactly what I had been experiencing. To my surprise, he not only believed me, but said he has a very similar experience when he was young and knew exactly what I had gone through. He told me that when he was some age between 11 and 14, he heard a repetitive and unexplainable sound stalking him every night too. Nobody else could hear it. It would only happen once everyone had gone to sleep. It would move around the house. He moved his bed into his older brother's room to not be alone. My dad described the sound that would haunt him like a heavy object being dragged across carpet. A hissing sound, pause and then repeat. He said the last night he heard it, the sound was really loud and under his bed. His brother woke up and saw his brother described as a red bull's head peeking from under my dad's bed. The similarities were eerie. I never heard it ever again. Three years of just that sound over and over again every night. And then after that, everything was just back to normal, like those three years never happened. It was selective and somewhat intelligent about who it wanted to be around. It was like it was afraid of my dad. It would never happen when my dad was awake, and then as soon as he would leave to even step outside, it would happen again. I've never found an explanation for it. If you have any similar experience or have theories, tell me, please. It's been years since then, and I still think about it.